Let's let's bring in uh, Jason Jones of the Athletic. Jason, we're talking about the situation with with Andrew Wiggins and the Golden State Warriors and the mandate from uh, the Department of Public Health and, and the situation that the Golden State Warriors and the Brooklyn Nets and New York Knicks may be facing as the season gets closer. Have you heard anything about this from the league about these uh, these markets that have uh, rules about vaccinations in large indoor gatherings? Well, I haven't heard anything solid. I just think it's kind of one of those fluid things. This thing is like changing, you know, week to week, month to month. And I get, you know, the league solution, the easy solution would be everyone to be vaccinated, but, you know, we're not there yet. And I don't know how you figure this out. I mean, you can't have a situation, you know, you know, I know, I know at our company, they say they don't want people, quote unquote, outing someone who's not vaccinated. Mm-hmm. But to out yourself if you play for the Knicks and you can't play at home. Mm-hmm. Right. And I and I don't I don't I don't I don't know like you know the contract ramifications of that you know are you forfeiting money I don't, I don't know how you deal with that yeah yeah that that's going to be a dicey situation in San Francisco and in New York um, because those are two ho- high profile cities there's high profile teams when you talk about the Nets Knicks and the Warriors so it's, I mean it's the NBA it's not like you could hide anyway but those are going to be major discussions. Those are going to be things that we talk about on D-Lo and KC that they talk about on first take because these are high-profile teams. And I just don't know where this goes. I don't know if if you're the Warriors, do you ride this out with Andrew Wiggins and does it go the whole year without getting vaccinated? Like, this is this is uncharted territory, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you do. I mean, as much as they're paying Andrew Wiggins, I don't, they don't want a situation where they don't play on the road. <laughs> you know, but the question becomes also how dug in is Andrew Wiggins in his stance? Yeah. You know, and you know, is it a you know, is it a you know medical reason? Is it personal? Is it religious? I don't know. I really don't know how you handle this because it always seemed like you know public health would override certain you know personal beliefs. But mm. this is a we've never been here before. We've never had such a situation with the league. I don't know what to do because I mean, pretty much the league is mandating everyone except players be vaccinated i mean mm. if you're in the media you can't be you know on the level of the player or in or anywhere near in person if you're not vaccinated the coach i mean everyone's got to be vaccinated except the players it's a really you know touchy situation and that's obviously because the union is involved uh jason you said uh we've never been here before uh fellas get comfortable there's a good chance we're going to be here for a very very long time at this rate uh, Jason Jones of the Athletic with us here on D'Lo and KC. We've heard from a whole lot of Sacramento Kings over the course of the last couple of days, particularly Davion Mitchell, uh, Tyrese Halliburton, Harrison Barnes, De'Aaron Fox. Uh, one thing that, that, that popped up with all of them, uh, particularly Harrison, Tyrese, and De'Aaron, they were glowing about Davion Mitchell. And, Jason, there was a lot of talk about defense uh, over the course of the last couple of days. It seems pretty clear. An- anxious to get your thoughts on this. Defense is the theme of this upcoming season. Yeah, but I don't believe it when I see it. Because some, <laughs> some of these guys are the exact same guys who didn't play defense last year. And, and, you know, you go through this with every team, every season. This time of year, everyone's optimistic. Everyone's saying the right thing. But I always say it goes back to this. If you lose two games in a row, what do you do? Who do you become? You know, do you do you buckle down and do the right thing, or do you just kind of give in to doing the you know the easy way out? And for years, we've seen them take the easy way out. You know, we've heard guys say, "We're going to play defense now. We're going to do this. We're going to do this," and then go out there and not do it. And as much as I like what Davion Mitchell did in college and even in summer league, this is a whole lot to put on Davion Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean. It's it's a you know it's a lot to ask a rookie even no, no matter how good he is to come in and like our defense is going to be so much better because we drafted someone. It's like uh, he's still one person, mm-hmm. and you know we need you know you need more than that. So I mean it sounds great, but you know what? Like I said, I'll believe it in December, January, February. You know because I mean I think going into last year they could have told you defense has to be a key. They could have told you that ten years ago. And then they didn't play defense. That's the Grinch. Jason Jones with us here. The Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to trying to trying to ruin all our preseason optimism. No, that's fine, Jason. No, it's fine. 
fine. Go ahead, Casey. No, it's fine. That, 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 I mean, look, man. I'm just saying. I mean, like I said before, if Davion Mitchell turns him into a good defensive team, give him rookie of the year, even if he averages zero points. Oh give wow! Him yeah. But look, so that I mean, but the, that would be that would be one of the greatest miracles I've ever seen in the NBA. If if Davion Mitchell comes in and all of a sudden the Kings, you know, are the 89 Pistons. <laughs> but see, here's the deal about that, Jason, is this is this was the worst defensive team in the game last year, them and the Wizards. And Davion isn't going to take them from uh, worst to first. But Davion and his, his aura, his energy on the defensive end, I think can take them from worst to 17th. I don't think that's conce- inconceivable. I don't think that's that on too much. <laughs> I don't think that's too much uh, to ask a Davion. And the one reason why I say that as well is, I, look, he's only one man. You're 100 percent right. But you've been around the game. You know, these players know. Every time, like I feel like he's been brought up by every player that's talked so far this week. They're like, "Yo, Davion comes in here, boosts up the defense." Like they know, they know. Yeah, I agree with that, but my, to me it speaks to a bigger issue of the DNA of the team. you got a lot of vets, guys who've been around. How is he coming in and you can say, what, the rookie's here, but gets you better play defense now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just – I, I, <sighs> no, I feel you on that. a bigger issue. I'm just like, really? Now you want to play defense because Davion's here? Well, Does it help <laughs> – does it help with guys like Mo Harkless and Terrence Davis? And I mean, I, I think Tyrese is is committed to the defensive end, and to a certain degree, I think De'Aaron is too. Does it help that you know you have those guys here now, particularly talking about Mo Harkless and Terrence Davis for an entire season? And I mean, Alex Lynn as well, and to a certain degree, yeah. Tristan Thompson. Oh yeah. oh yeah, that definitely helps. I think so. I mean, I, I call Mo a know-how player. He said. He knows how to play the game. He knows where to be. And so many of their issues last season were guys that didn't know where to be in simple situations. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I, when I see a guy go, when I see a guy leave Joel and B to go cover Ben Simmons at the three point line, you got major issues. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you got, you got to have guys just know what to do. So, yeah. I mean, it's definitely going to help. You know, I, I didn't, I'm just having some whole Davion part, but I, 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 you know, to a degree. But I think they do need more of a commitment from everyone else. You know, it can't be, well, we got Harrison or, you know, we got Harrison and Rashawn and Davion. It's got to be 1 through 10, 1 through 12 committed on that end because you don't get as bad as they are. I know it's it's real fun to to blame Marvin and Buddy for the defense, but you're not that bad just because of Marvin and Buddy. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. You know, especially when, yeah, you're not that, you're you're not that, you know, and and a lot of it will go back on De'Aaron. You know, he's got to, you know, set, you know, I think where Davion will help him is that, you know what, if you've got a, you know, a tough matchup, which you will have most nights, De'Aaron doesn't have to guard that guy all night. But the trade off is then becomes De'Aaron, when you're guarding him, you can't, you can't flat. Right. You can't give in. You got to be all in on guarding that guy. We'll get you a break. And that's what the Kings have tried to do for the last two or three years. Give him guys that say, you know what, we'll get you a break if you're, you know, if you're winded, we're not going to make you cover Russell, Westbrook, Steph, the entire game, but we need you to be have that intensity level up the whole time. And that's what, that's what they've been looking for, De'Aaron. So if De'Aaron can give them that you know, for four quarters every night defensively, you, you add that with having adding Davion, Tyrese being a year better, you know, Rashawn being back, Harrison, Moe, Terrence, they got a chance. To, because to me, if they're just middle of the road, it's all they got to be. They don't have to be, you know, you know, <laughs> elite Spurs defense or anything like that. If they're in the top, I mean, they've only been in the top twenty in efficiency once in the last fifteen years. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and that was Luke's first year. Jeez. So that's the only time they've been in the top twenty in defense. So if they can just get, you know, like you said, seventeen, they might be eight, or, you know, eight or ninth in the West just because mm. just because they're going to be able to score. Mm-hmm. But you just can't go out there and give up 120, 125 every night. We ask this uh, often, uh, Jason, all summer long. And now we're here a few days before training camp starts. And we're still asking the same question. Buddy Hill, Marvin Bagley, they're going to be here opening night for the Kings? 
after everything that's gone on this summer? I think so. I mean, of course, things can change quickly, but at this point, most teams are pretty much set unless you're the Timberwolves. You know, the only team is, <laughs> yeah, 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 cool. But yeah, usually, you know, <laughs> usually teams are set. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, that's a whole, they got some stuff going on over there to sound like a soap opera. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> Yeah, you know, but usually yeah. things are going to go in the camp of what they have. They're really, the only, the only to me, the only domino that could affect all that is Philly and Ben Simmons. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the only yeah. thing that could change anything at this point. Because I don't, I don't see any other player, you know, that can that can really get this would be moved at this point. You know, a lot of guys signed deals can't be moved. You know, until that date. You know, think think in mid December. So right now, this is going to be your team, I think, unless you know, like I said, to me. The Ben Simmons thing would be the one thing that could change things for people. Mm. Jason, are there open? Do you think there are open starting positions headed into camp? I think there. I would call it. I think so. I think there. I, I think outside. I think De'Aaron starts. Rashad sure. starts. Harrison mm-hmm. starts. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah. then it's a matter of what stylistically. What do you do? Do you start Marvin? And then you know fit him and move Harrison to the four? Do you say our better defensive lineup is Mo, Mo, you know, Mo and Harrison? And then you bring Marvin off the bench, which would be, be a whole other adventure and, you know, <laughs> facial expressions and random tweets. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, do you start Tyrese yeah. and bring Buddy off the bench? I mean, yes. I mean, they're the, the definitive <laughs> answer there is yeah, yes. I think, yeah, I, I, I would agree with that, too. You know, I think his, I also think the numbers bear out that Buddy's a more efficient player off the bench. Mm-hmm. Even though he hates, you know, he hate, I think he struggles with the notion of being called a quote quote bench player, mm-hmm. even though his minutes don't really change that much. But I think right. if you, I think by bringing in Davion with by bringing Davion in, if you have Buddy and Davion coming into games together, you're already bringing a defender in with him. And one of the issues they had last year was how do we hide two or three bad defenders? And you want to, eat, you know, and, and, you, and then you're aligning the minutes. You can't have Buddy out there because I mean, I want to say, I say, I always say this: Buddy's always trying. He may not succeed, but he's trying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you got to make sure you have guys who can help him out there on that end. Because I mean, there's some nights like Buddy was playing the three, mm-hmm. and I don't mm-hmm. care, you know, you know what you do. But he can't guard LeBron James. No, no, he he's cannot. Just too small. He just. <laughs> I don't think small. he can I mean, guard Bronny James. <laughs> 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 see, 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 this is poor buddy. He's just sitting around trying to, you know, cr- you know, prank nurses and catching strays on the radio. See, see. no, I, I'm not trying to like. I, buddy's not a good defender. It's not like I just broke news He's to not, everybody. Oh, I, you, just, you won't get me. You gonna, you know, last year when he was at the, with the priest and he was saying, you know, MF is saying I, I don't play defense. Like, I, I am one of who said you don't play defense. I agree. <laughs> you know, if, if that's what you want to call us for saying you don't play defense, you can call me one. Because, you know, I, I've said a million times you don't play defense. <laughs> I'm like, your teammates have said you don't play defense. The coaches have said you don't play defense. So, hey, <laughs> it is what it is, you know, yeah. but. Yeah, I think there's going to be some, you know, some shuffling. I think, I think that's a good thing. I think last, part of the problem you had last year was you didn't really have any options. This is just the team you had. I mean, we were debating about whether Daquan Jeffrey should, you know, should oh. play, and he's been on what two or three teams since. Yeah, uh, I just you wanted know, to hit the Quan soundbite. Have... That's all. I had a I'm great sorry. sound bite for Daquan Jeffries. Hit Daquan. <laughs> hit Daquan. It's just like as soon as we had it ready, like he was gone. That's the only reason we wanted Daquan <laughs> Jeffries to play. Yeah. I mean, we yeah, like I sound think bites they, I here. Think a, I think they finally are closer to having a, what I would call a real NBA roster. You know, mm-hmm. now you just kind of see what you do with it. I think they can, I, I, I still believe they can finish in the top ten. I still believe that if they get some type of defensive commitment from everyone. I got to be honest. I was trying to keep Jason on the phone as long as possible because this ninth inning in Colorado Come was on, going man. on for an hour. And it was 5-4 Colorado, and I just couldn't wait to give the final score to Jason Jones. Oh, it's, it's, well, it's now all, it's 5-5. It's, it's all bad in all of baseball right now. Now, now it's 5-5. It's, it's five, five. A variety of things have gone wrong during this conversation mm-hmm. with Jason. Oh, what man, that's right. Well, what did Usher say? The Dodgers win. I mean, 
Hey, when Every- I went down to Dodger Stadium last week, you know, they won, so I'm going to take credit, you know. They, they 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 didn't lose till I wasn't at a game. So, well, I'm, I'm glad guess, you don't yeah, have said, season tickets. How about that? I'm glad uh, you don't that, have season that, tickets. That, that, that's next level stuff. You know, I wasn't ready for all that. You know, <laughs> you know, when the, when the stadium was going to be open for fans this season, you know, next season, you know, that that's that's a very realistic possibility. Give me a reason to be down in L.A. more often. I'm with yeah. it. Well, you know, I'll, you, I'll, I'll even let you come to the game with me. You know, you, you can come to Blue Heaven oh. Arms with me. Oh, that's I, nice. I've been there a couple different times. I got the Giants uh, gear on every time I go down there. They know what time it is. Uh, no one really cares about your Giants gear. So, <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, just come, come enjoy Blue Heaven on Earth. You know, get you a Dodger dog, you know. You know, get uh, you a new Dodger cap, you know. No, you'll, you'll, no. you'll, you'll fit right in. I mean, you lived in L.A., so, I mean, yeah. hey. Yeah, it ain't with no, with no Blue Heaven when I was up in there. It was black and orange heaven. Simple as that. That's not true, but okay. Yeah, I ain't never took over Chavez regime ever, ever. <laughs> what? You sound crazy on that one. We was no, we was taking over. We was taking over. We was that's taking over happened. during Manny Manny Wood. We was taking over easy, easy work. No, if you okay, if, if you want to believe that, okay. <laughs> How was Man, uh, Manny, Manny's time? Manny's time was fun though. From so fun for us. <laughs> I Manny, think we'll just, Manny Ramirez. We'll, we're going to let Jason go. I really wanted to get in a question about Raider Stadium, but it, 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 y'all are, are, are locked oh. into the Dodgers versus Giants, so I'll, I'll leave oh, it. Oh, no, I'm, I'm all about that. I've been to a legion. It's beautiful. Yeah, it I, I can't great. wait to see it. It looks incredible. Yeah, it looks great. It's beautiful. I mean, you know, I guess I, I think part of the bias is the fact that I was at Oakland Coliseum so many times. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> almost, every, almost everything was anything. I mean, it was, you know, as long as the bathroom was working as an upgrade, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's like it's Golden One Center in uh, Arco. <laughs> we were in Arco for yeah, so long. And, you get and, to go to One Center. It's like, oh, the two thousands. Yeah, it's like it's a good. It, it's it's nice, but you don't realize. You know, I, I always tell a lot of old Kings fans back in the day. They'd be like, "What's wrong with Arco?" I said, "Go to another stadium and then come back and ask me that." <laughs> and I had pretty much been to every NFL stadium, and I was like, at that point, all the terrible stadiums were in California. It would have been mm. back then San Diego, San Francisco, and Oakland had the three worst stadiums. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, Jason. yeah, Allegiance is beautiful, you know, and after they beat the Dolphins, it'll be even more beautiful when they're 3-0, and and then I can be happy until John Gruden lets them lose five in a row <laughs> and get thirty in November. I, I, I agree with everything positive. Jason just said. They're going to go 3-0 this I, I, I week. and then everyone, let me, I'm, I'm going to enjoy it because I know what's coming around Thanksgiving. There you oh, go. All right. Like, wow. They, they control bad. their own destiny. Now they can't win a game. Damn. Well, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm just had my head beat in too many times by that organization. I just, you know, I want to be wrong, but I can't, I, I can't be crazy and act like I don't know what, what's, what's likely to happen. Just so that's, that's what's happened the last few years. That's a trip. You can't even be excited till like December. I'm not, yeah, yeah. It's, I I refuse to I refuse to be excited. I'm like it's it's fun it's fun if they won, but it's like okay, somebody was on somebody told me they're in first place. I'm like spare me, please, please don't be that person. <laughs> I remember what please happened the last time. There. I remember what happened the last time Raider fans got excited in December. Oof. Week sixteen rolled around. Oof. Yeah. So All maybe right. I'll just yeah. maybe I'll just maybe I'll just wait till after the playoff game to get excited. <laughs> maybe hold off just a yeah, couple I mean, of more yeah, weeks. And I was at I was at the game when Derek Carr broke his broke. I was like the whole oh. the whole stadium we left. And people were like, "It's going to be okay." I said, "No, it's not. Come on, it's <laughs> over." <laughs> people were like, "Come on, let's get." I'm like, "It's over." I said, "They're back with some guy you never heard of. It's over." Oh, man. It, it was that was and over. sure enough, that was that, bad. they started some dude in that playoff game that's, that I don't remember. They started that dude from uh, Michigan State, right? What was his name? Was it Connor Cook. Yeah. Yeah, Somebody is Connor who, Cook is that who it was? No longer playing football professionally. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, we 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 appreciate you, man. Appreciate Thanks you for joining Jay. us. Stay no tuned. Problem. Hey, Anytime. hey, 